Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we're gonna look at some of the options that are available to us when publishing messages using RabbitMQ. Some of these options are in the AMQP specification, while others the RabbitMQ team have expanded on the specification by adding. These options allow us to achieve many things, such as improving the speed of our system, increasing system reliability, or better describing the messages that we send. Like many things in RabbitMQ and information technology in general, changing settings to improve our system in one area may have adverse effects on another. We've seen in previous videos how we can use the AMQP basic properties data structure to set various properties on our messages. Some of these are simple and make it easier for consumers to know what to do with our messages. Content type, for example, allows our consumers to determine the media type without examining the message body. It can be set to things such as application.json, application PDF, or something else that represents the content type of our message. On the other hand, setting the content encoding tells our consumers what encoding standard the message is using. This might be something like gzip, compress, or deflate. Other properties such as timestamp can be used to tell when a message was published, while setting the app ID and user ID can allow us to better determine who has published a message. When using the user ID, we need to be a little bit careful. If it is not set to the same user ID as the logged in user, then RabbitMQ will reject the message. And by logged in user here, we mean the user name that is used to log into RabbitMQ. Setting some other properties has a bigger functional impact than properties that simply help to better describe our messages. One of the most important and impactful is setting the delivery mode property. This property has two possible values. Setting it to one indicates that a message should be persisted to disk before being sent to consumers. Setting it to zero means that it does not need to be persisted to disk. Use this wisely and consider your use case before selecting the appropriate delivery mode for your message. While setting a value to one can improve reliability and help ensure that published messages are not lost before they are consumed, it can also lead to more latency in our system and consume more hardware resources. For example, it might be important to persist messages containing financial transactions to disk. However, persisting messages related to logs and analytics may not be as important as it may not be a critical failure if those messages are lost. Another interesting property we can set is the expiration property. This tells RabbitMQ to discard a message if it is not consumed after a certain period of time. The message is set to a Unix epoch stored as a string. Using it can help free up memory in our system as out of date or irrelevant messages are automatically removed and don't sit around using valuable system resources. These are not the only properties we can set and RabbitMQ gives us access to a custom headers data structure where we can add user defined key value pairs. As we have seen, this can even be used to route messages throughout our system when used in conjunction with the headers exchange. Now that we've talked about the various RabbitMQ properties we can set, let's take a minute to discuss how we balance the speed of our system with its reliability. We'll talk about a few of the options we have when publishing, from which is the fastest but least reliable to which is the slowest but has the highest reliability. Bear in mind that this is not an exhaustive list of all options, so please review the RabbitMQ documentation if these do not suit your needs. Bear in mind that how fast or reliable these methods are depends also on your implementation and the hardware you are using. The quickest way to publish messages into RabbitMQ is to not rely on any guarantee of delivery. Once the message is published, we receive no confirmation that the message has been either successfully or unsuccessfully routed to consumers. This is clearly the quickest way to publish a message onto RabbitMQ. Second to this is the use of the mandatory flag, which simply tells Rabbit to only notify us if a message has failed to be routed. Next fastest, we have publisher confirms. This is an option that is set at the channel level, and so all messages sent on a channel when this is enabled will be published using this setting. This forces RabbitMQ to respond with an acknowledgement that either the message was successfully published, and by published here we mean consumed by consumer applications on all queues it was routed to, or it was successfully persisted if required. The downside here is that Rabbit gives us no guarantee as to when this is received. It could be straight away, or it could be after a significant period of time. Another option we can use is transactions. Transactions give us a better guarantee that a batch of messages have been committed to a queue or else rolled back. We can start a transaction, publish a number of messages, and then commit the transaction. However, it's worth noting that if a transaction affects more than one queue, then it won't be atomic, which means either all of the messages are published or none are. 
Clearly, the decoupled nature of publisher and consumers means that it's difficult for a publisher to know how many queues are going to consume a message, so transactions often need to be used with caution. Finally, for the slowest speed but best reliability, we can use persistent messages by setting the delivery mode to one as discussed above. If used in combination with queues that are declared as durable, which means that the queue's existence will survive a reboot of the message broker, then we can achieve the highest level of reliability at a sacrifice of significant speed. Using well-provisioned hardware, particularly with solid state drives, is a must when persisting messages and using durable queues. There are some other options available to us to improve the reliability of our system. These include using alternative exchanges and highly available queues. Using a combination of these different methods can result in a fast and reliable system if used correctly. We'll look very quickly at how to set and use some of these properties in Python. We won't look at this using C Sharp in this series, but it's quite simple to use and they're very similar to here. We can see, as we said, that to enable publisher confirms, we do it at the channel level. So in the Pika client, we just call channel.confirms delivery. Again, with transactions, for instance, we declare channel.tx select at the channel level, and then we call channel tx commit or channel tx rollback after we've published some messages. We can see how to declare a durable queue here. When we're declaring our queue, we just mark it with the durable flag and RabbitMQ will take care of the rest. Also, when publishing messages, we can set various different properties. Like we discussed, we can set the headers, the delivery mode, which will save the message to our disk, expirations, content type, and many others. Also note the mandatory flag that we've set here in which we are telling RabbitMQ we want to receive a notification of failure. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and stick around for more RabbitMQ.